Hey, hey, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at market equilibrium. And the easiest way to do this is to show you the graph. But before we get there, I want you to take a look at this definition of equilibrium. A state of rest, self-perpetuating in the absence of any outside disturbance. That is what equilibrium means. And in the marketplace, that point is established where the supply curve and the demand curve meet. So you would say that the market is equilib in equilibrium at P1, Q1 because the amount of gasoline that is supplied in the marketplace is equal to the demand of gasoline in the marketplace. And this point right here is the optimal point for the allocation of resources in the marketplace. Okay, So when, it's, when, a, when a market is in equilibrium, resources are efficiently allocated, and this is the best allocation of resources for society. And that sounds like some really fancy economic language, and in a way it is. It's economic discourse. But what this is saying is that at that point, right there, we're P, we're at P1, Q1, this is where the demand and the supply have found a place that both the demanders and the suppliers would be happy. This is what happens when you go up and you bargain for a bracelet in an open market and you ask what the price is and you say you're willing to pay $5 and the person says $10 and then you guys say, okay, how about seven fifty? And you say, okay, you have established a market equilibrium where you're happy to pay seven fifty. It's a little more than what you would have wanted to pay, but $10 is a, seven fifty is a little is a little bit less than what the supplier really wanted to take. But at that point, right, your demand, your willingness and ability to buy it, and the producer's willing and pro willingness and ability to supply it have been met. So this is the optimal place. And, and the equilibrium is a situation that's self-writing, which is to say that if you try to move away from it without an outside disturbance, it will return to the original position, and it's the best described by taking a look at a couple diagrams. Before we get there, however, let's look at some key terms. Okay, Market clearing price is the equilibrium price, so P1 in the case that we were looking at, the graph we were just looking at. And that is because everything produced in the market will be sold. Excess supply exists when more of a product is being supplied to a market than is demanded at a certain price. And this is also known as a surplus, and we'll take a look at that in a second. And the other key term you have to have in your, in your brain before we get into the, to the graphs is excess demand. And excess demand exists when more of a product is, is in demand than what is supplied at a given price. And this results in a situation called a, sh a shortage. Okay, so let's take a look at that in terms of a graph. First, the situation of excess supply. So what's happened here? Well, the original equilibrium price, right, was P1, Q1. But let's say that suppliers said, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to try to charge a little bit more money for this, for this bracelet. And they try to get a price that's higher than the original equilibrium price. Okay, what would happen? Well, you can by looking at this diagram, you can you can see that by looking at this diagram at this price level right here, right? What we could call P2, it's not labeled on here. At P2, right? The suppliers if the price were P2, like let's say this is $5 and this is $10, at P2, hey, check it out. This amount of suppliers would be willing and able to produce it at a price of $10. However, at $10, what happens? Well, only this amount of demanders, this quantity of demanders or consumers are willing to pay a price of $10. So what happens? Well, this quantity right here, my graph's a little bit off here, but this, gra this line right here, we could call that Q2, and we'll call this Q3, and this P2. At P2 guess what? There's a disequilibrium in the marketplace, right? It's, there, it's, there is only Q2 will be sold in the marketplace at the price of P2 because that's the only thing, these are the only people that are willing to pay that price. So what will suppliers do? Well, 
they only really have one choice because now they have all these excess, there's all this excess gasoline in the marketplace. They're going to have to start cutting price, cutting price, cutting price, cutting price, cutting price, until that excess supply, which was the result of the suppliers trying to push up the price without any outside disturbance, they're going to have to cut the price back to the original price of P1. And at that point, the situation is self-writing and this excess supply that was created when suppliers tried to to demand, tr- suppliers tried to get a price of P2, they had to eventually push their price back down to P1 and therefore P1, Q1 was what actually transpired in the marketplace and the original equilibrium point was met again because this situation is self-writing, okay, without any outside disturbance. So that is excess supply or surplus. Now let's take a look at what would happen for excess demand, or how excess demand would be created in the marketplace. So take a look at this graph here, right? Let's say that suppliers, for whatever reason, decided that they were going to cut price. And so the price dropped from P1, say, down here to P2, Q2. Okay, What's that, what does this graph tell us? There's stories inside these graphs, right? P1, Q1 was the original equilibrium price. And what suppliers did was they, they cut price down to P2. Well, what happened? Well, at P2, only this amount of suppliers was willing and able to produce at that price level. Well, of course, at a lower price, demanders are going to demand more, right? Q3 quantity will be demanded in the marketplace, but only Q2 will be available because only these suppliers are able to supply it for the price of P2. So what's going to happen? Suppliers are going to have to start raising the price. And as they raise the price, all of these producers will get back into the marketplace. Remember, I told you to think about this graph, all of both of these curves as simply individual data points, individual data points along the lines that create the the feeling of a graph. Well, if you think of, uh, not of a graph, the feeling of of a curve, of a line. And so as producers start raising the price to get rid of the excess demand, right, what's going to happen? Well, all of these producers are welcomed back into the marketplace. And these demanders, the demanders that are right here by these black dots, they're going to get cut out. But where so what the situation will happen is P1Q1, which was the original equilibrium price, is self-writing. Without an outside disturbance, the market will shift itself back to the equilibrium uh, price-quantity combination of P1Q1, thus eliminating the shortage. So that's a look at what happens in the marketplace when suppliers try to change the price and that is that would mean that there would be a movement right along the supply curve or the price would go up and down and that would result in a change both in a along the supply curve and in the demand curve now in the next video we'll take a look at what will happen if one of these lines one of these curves the the demand curve were to shift out or maybe if supply were to shift in well i hope you found that video to be helpful and i'll talk to you in a bit